Healing with a Pendulum. A talk given by Jack Temple in London, on 14th of March, 1983. About 1974, I accepted the invitation to write on the subject of organic gardening in the popular health magazine, Here's Health, on a regular basis. I make no apology for the amount of space I devote in my columns, to pointing out to readers, how food is being devalued in vitamin and mineral content, and worse, containing much in the way of harmful poisons. My first contact with large numbers of people all looking for alternative methods of improving their health, was when I became course tutor for, Living Naturally Courses, organized by the magazine. My involvement lasted for five years, and I brought together for the first time ever, speakers well versed in these subjects. Homeopathy, herbalism, osteopathy, aromatherapy, yoga, reflexology, acupressure, vitamins and minerals, tissue salts, allergies, zone therapy, bark remedies, kinesiology, dowsing and many other forms of what we now call alternative medicine. All the speakers were dedicated professional people, experienced in their subjects and nearly all possessed certificates of competence issued by their societies. At the time, I was the mere organizer of those courses, but I always listened with rapt attention to learn everything I could. They were pearls of wisdom. Something happened to change my life all over again. I was reintroduced to the pendulum. I could douse for water years ago but never thought to pursue it. My pendulum hardly left my hand, especially after I read Tom Graves' book Dowsing. Some of my family were skeptical to say the least, but not my grandson, age four. He badgered his mum for a pendulum like granddad's, and in desperation she made a pendulum from a garden radish and a piece of cotton. The first thing I knew about the radish pendulum was at the dinner table when he came marching in, all 36 inches of him, and triumphantly held his radish pendulum over our food. My wife and I both gawked in astonishment. The radish changed direction according to the food it was over, and when I checked it with mine, he was right each time too. Since then, the radish pendulum is always introduced to students who attend my organic gardening courses. It is quite a sight seeing 30 to 40 people walking amongst my vegetables, swinging radish pendulums. I hear from some of them from time to time and they tell me that of all the wrinkles picked up, the pendulum created the most lasting impression. The answer as to why the pendulum was so active in my hands, came to me during one of our course lectures. A speaker was demonstrating an improved type of biofeedback machine. She told us how the human brain is divided up into different sections, and explained that in most people the beta section of the brain is the most highly developed. The strong beta side in scientists, technicians and mathematicians confirms this. The theta side is called the intuitive side and covers artists, musicians, doctors and healers. After saying all this, the demonstrator clamped seven sensors on my head, I was the guinea pig. This machine revealed that I possessed a very strong theta wave. I think the brain must be subdivided again, because the only time I venture into the field of music or art is when these gifted people come to me with seized muscles for me to release. All my theta waves seem channeled into healing. About this time, I was directed to Bruce McManaway, and after working and learning in his London practice, I have to thank him not only for the opportunity but also for giving me a gentle push into my own practice. It was the sort of push I needed because without holding any professional certificates I didn't know how I would be received. I needn't have worried. The situation turned out to be the same as in the year when a Lincolnshire doctor invited me to lecture to members of his health club, on how to garden organically. The doctor kindly put me up for the night. Next morning at breakfast the door opened and in walked one of his patients. She asked me whether I was Jack Temple. Puzzled I said yes. The doctor sent me, she replied. She must have recognized my puzzled look and explained that the doctor sent her, to see whether I could attend to the loud buzz in her head which she was at that moment suffering from. With my pendulum I tracked down the offending meridian near her ear and treated it. Later the doctor explained that he was a great believer in sending his patients to people with natural gifts. This included the tractor driver down the road who had a gift for setting bones. I never set out in life to be a healer, but now I'm here I find so many different directions calling out for attention, nutrient deficiencies, food with poisonous sprays, industrial metals, allergies, over-supplementation, food poisons and pharmaceutical poisons. When I came to deal with patients in my own practice, I discovered that all my years of organic growing were of terrific value to me. People were subject to the same hazards as the plants in the soil. For instance, there was the time when a commercial grower asked me over in a hurry to inspect a field of cauliflowers. I happened to have been the raiser of all those plants, 100,000 to be exact. They all looked bizarre as the stems were corkscrewed and twisted in a most peculiar manner. Yet my own cauliflowers growing in my organic garden were perfect. Soil scientists gave us the answer. My customer's field was depleted in molybdenum, 
and he only had to spray one part per million of molybdenum and all those plants unscrewed themselves and turned into magnificent cauliflowers. Whenever I read books on nutrition, and come across remarks like, there are no known effects of molybdenum deficiency in humans, I say rubbish. My pendulum tells me just where to look for molybdenum deficiencies in patients and more often than not, it turns out to be the eyes. I measure the molybdenum content of both the left and the right eyes. Without much difficulty I have managed to improve patients' eyesight just by prescribing foods rich in molybdenum. Then again when farmers find their livestock affected by swayback, they all know to incorporate copper in the food. But how many doctors look for copper deficiency when patients suffer from leg problems? They don't usually bother about nutrition at all anyway. In fact one doctor told me that to qualify he studied for 7 years to learn 33 different subjects, but nutrition wasn't one of them. The common fallacy is that we get all our nutrition from our foods. This may have been so in the past, but not now. To buy food nowadays which still has its complete food value and has no contamination, is a real game of hunt the thimble. But thank goodness for the pendulum. Food which should have been full of vitamins and minerals is now full of hardness and softness, firming agents and anti-firming agents, acidifiers and alkalizers, bleaches, coloring agents, thickeners, thinners, preservers and so on. Before I buy my food, I ask the question, has this got any obnoxious substance? If the pendulum says yes, I don't buy it. I remember once a fishmonger asking me how I knew his herrings weren't fit for sale. The answer was simple, I merely asked the question are these herrings fit to eat? The answer was short and direct, no. With a background like mine I can only think in terms of total nutrition. I know for a fact that if minerals are not in the soil they cannot be gathered from the air, for example the iodine deficiency of Derbyshire neck. Therefore, I do emphasize the need to all the people I come in contact with, that the finest thing they can do for themselves is to grow their own food. And with such a background like mine it is no wonder I always think of pH when dowsing patients. This in gardening terms, describes the acid-slash-alkalinity balance of the soil. If acidity increases too much then phosphorus, potassium, calcium and magnesium levels will become unavailable to the plants. On the other hand, if the soil becomes too alkaline, then iron, manganese, boron, copper and zinc will be equally locked up. I always aim to keep my garden soil in a 6.8 to 7 pH range. And that is the treatment I give my patients. The way the pendulum picks up the body's pH level is absurdly easy, but it is always encouraging when patients offer their own confirmation of the diagnosis. Such as the lady who said I must be right, because of the way her rings were always turning black. Something else I have noticed, are the times when all patients come in suffering from identical problems. Take January when back problems abounded, and everybody was suffering from twinges and painful backs. The answer was astounding. When I discovered that each patient had a low level of phosphorus in the spine, I decided it was time for research with the pendulum. The result came up that the trouble seemed to coincide with rapid drops in temperature below 48 degrees Fahrenheit. At such times of fluctuating temperatures, the body seemed to call for extra phosphorus. The canny Scots must have known a thing or two when they adopted the phosphorus-rich porridge oats as their natural breakfast. When the patients did the same and also added some phosphorus tissue salts, the phosphorus levels of the spine got back to normal, and strength had returned to the spine. But I have not got around to finding out about February. That was when they all came in short of silica, and now that it is March, why do so many of them need sulfur? There is something that really puzzles patients when I diagnose an iron deficiency. They protest that they have been taking masses of iron, but a moment's checking with the pendulum showed the reason why. Their iron supplements were only fit for the dustbin. So many people rely on cheap iron supplements, but these are very often a type which the body can never absorb. A moment spent on dowsing will soon sort out the goodies from the baddies. It isn't only iron that needs to be doused, it also applies to the whole range of food supplements. I well remember the look on the face of the millionaire patient when I threw his 27 pounds packet of ginseng into my overworked waste bin. That was the only thing wrong with an otherwise very fit man. That brand of ginseng was poisoning him, the right brand of ginseng for him cost only 3 pounds and 40 pence. Another major problem which is affecting large numbers of people, is the intake of poisonous sprays on foods grown on the huge farms now covering the countryside. It is called prairie farming. The word efficient is really a cover-up. One man spraying weed killers and pesticides onto crops is a quick way of keeping down labor costs. But look at the cost to human health. Without the pendulum how would one start to unravel the poison pains that people suffer from? I had one whole family suffering from severe pains in their kidneys and bladder, simply from eating apples grown in their own orchard. There was nothing wrong in the way they grew those apples, they were already aware of the dangers of spraying their fruit. 
No, it was the hormone grass weed killer which caused the mischief. The grass looked lovely and there were no weeds anywhere, but slowly and surely the tree roots drew that hormone weed killer up on its way into the tree. The pendulum told me what to do about it. I used zinc chelates and essential oils to extract the poison from its lodging place, and fortunately they recovered in a week or so. Other sources of trouble have been carrots, peas and sweet corn. It is very easy to understand why painkillers have such large sales. People suffering from pains want an instant painkiller from their doctor. That means then, that along with the original cause, which is still there, the side effects of the painkiller have been added. The questions I always ask when treating new patients, concern food poisons, pharmaceutical poisons, as well as metals, for these all need pulling out before the patient can be restored to health. The insidious nature of aluminium poisoning was brought home to me only recently. If folk think that aluminium poisoning is a figment of a cranky imagination, they should think again. A friend of mine had aluminium poisoning. He was an organic enthusiast, and he not only grew his own food but doused everything brought in. That should have kept him healthy, but it didn't. What he forgot to do was to douse the aluminium foil he used to wrap round his beloved baked potatoes. That gave him a nasty bout of poor health and he became moody, and his vitality evaporated. In his case calcium was needed to effect a cure. Another metal which I look for is cadmium. It was unknown a generation or so ago but not any longer. It can lodge anywhere in the body and cause much mischief. A headmistress suffered this poison. All she did was to drink cups of beverages at her school and somehow a good quantity of this poison was swallowed with it, and it lodged in her kidneys. She was steadily putting on weight which was very unfair, because she wasn't on a fattening diet. It was because the cadmium prevented her from absorbing iodine and this affected the thyroid gland. There have also been occasions when it was necessary to draw lead poison out of the patient's system. To make all these findings, no machinery, no dials, no electrocardiograms, no testing equipment other than my little chain with its little silver ball at the end, and a host of questions. A discovery I made a little while ago made the treating of allergies quite straightforward and simple. Perhaps I should apologize to all those employed in the allergy industry, as so much of their labors could be quite unnecessary. My discovery concerns the back muscle known as the quadratus lumborum. This muscle is connected with the large intestine, and I have found that allergies disappear like quicksilver the moment this muscle is brought back into play. Powerful drugs, accidents, operations and even codeine and aspirin, will all contribute to this muscle losing its powerful strength. Once weakened the body seems to lose its supreme control and allows allergies to run wild, and the weakness remains until someone does something to restore it. Anybody with a working knowledge of kinesiology can put it right. But a dowser with a pendulum can pinpoint the trouble very quickly. The way to strengthen this muscle is described in the kinesiology book called Touch for Health. And now, about the craze that is sweeping this country, to do with supplementation. People feel the need to fortify their systems from time to time and health stores as well as chemist shops, all have shelves lined with food supplements. The choice is endless and the taking of supplements has become indiscriminate. I had one patient who had spent two years looking for an answer to her skin problem. Her face was a mass of red sores, and the best Harley Street skin specialist couldn't reduce those sores by one single spot. The information which my pendulum gave cleared up the skin trouble in four days. The culprit at the bottom of all her troubles was a food supplement she was taking for stress. With the benefit of hindsight, she then realized that her skin trouble started about the same time that she started taking her supplements. She just didn't connect the two. I am not saying that people should stop taking supplements. Far from it. Most of us need something after the way our food has been plasticized, but for goodness sake let's douse for the right choice. Standing in my local health food store one day, I was sent a customer who wanted personal advice. He told me in a confidential undertone that he wasn't really up to it on Friday nights. What confused him about choosing a remedy were the number of ginseng supplements on offer. Money was no object he assured me, so could I assist him with advice? I tried hard to save that man a lot of money. It wasn't ginseng that he needed. His body was completely out of the mineral zinc, as well as vitamin E, and that was the cause of his problem but such simple advice, even when backed up by the pendulum, went unheeded. He wanted his ginseng and that is what he walked out of the shop with. There is one thing which Tom Graves very rightly pointed out in his book, Dowsing. One could so easily jump to the wrong conclusion particularly as we only have a yes or no to go on. So, my approach to diagnosis is designed to avoid such pitfalls. I have always used the muscle tests as described in Touch for Health, as additional evidence of the accuracy of the dowsing. It is all very well telling a patient sitting six feet away that he has a poison on his bladder or kidney. Some people never believe anything, 
particularly since Paul Daniels has got so sophisticated with his acts. The muscle test is simple enough to carry out. It involves the patient raising one hand level with his shoulder. If the diagnosis is correct, the arm will lose all power, when the practitioner places one hand on the bladder alarm point, while gently coaxing down the raised arm with the other. The techniques I have just mentioned as well as the body's meridian alarm points are all described in Touch for Health. The beauty of using the muscle test is that the antidote can also be double-checked as well. For example, if the pendulum says yes to using zinc chelates which will pull a pesticide residue out of the bladder, then the muscle test can confirm this. Simply ask the patient to hold the requisite amount of zinc tablets lightly on the lips, and repeat the muscle test. But because of those patients who never believe in, why three tablets, why not four or even five? This is where the pendulum scores hands down, because if the pendulum says three it means that two is not enough and four is too much. Such pinpoint diagnosing is confirmed by the muscle test. The pendulum prescription always leaves the muscle at its strongest. But don't let's run away with the idea that when a remedy is found for one person, that it will do for anyone else in the same situation, I find that everybody is different. I don't remember when I first began to douse back in time, but I find this gift very useful to reassure patients that they are not in need of psychiatric treatment. That unfortunately is where many people find themselves when they suffer from obscure troubles. The young girl who was brought to me had screamed her way out of the psychiatric ward. She was pathetically thin, suffering from so-called anorexia. In her case, unlike the twiggies of this world, her thinness was lack of interest in eating, not a conscious desire to become a bean pole. The pendulum soon revealed that, a. she was desperately short of minerals, which in the circumstances was understandable, b. her quadratus lumborum muscle was knocked out and therefore not supporting her large intestine, c. the cause of this was a hidden bruise one and a half inches under the skin. I used the pendulum to go back in time to pinpoint the moment she had received such a thump, and then I asked her what happened two and a half years ago. Mother and daughter told me that was when she was pitched off her horse. Once I had pointed it out that was the moment when it all fell into place. Her daughter's health problem increased slowly but steadily after the fall. Within three months of bathing the bruise areas with herbal oils, resetting the quadratus lumborum, dowsing all the missing vitamins and minerals, there was no need for further treatment. She was a beautiful and happy girl. I am sure that dowsing back in time will always be remembered by a patient of mine for the rest of her life. She was an attractive lady in her thirties, but she was a bundle of nerves. The one thing that bothered her most was never being able to hold a pen in her right hand. She had never learnt to write. Dowsing back in time, I asked her what happened when she was four years of age. Then came the story. She was sitting on the beach with her parents, when her hand got so badly trapped in a folding deck chair, that they rushed her off to hospital. The doctors made such a good repair job of the mangled hand, that when she started school some eighteen months later, Nobody connected the accident with her inability to hold a pen. After I had restored the use of her hand, she picked up a pen and found she was writing. She broke down in tears and said, all my life they'd been telling me I was stupid. More dramatic was the patient who came to me after 14 doctors could find nothing wrong. None could find why she would suddenly keel over. This affliction came out of the blue. It was very significant, that each doctor not finding a cause, concluded that the problem lay within herself. In other words, it was psychosomatic. The first thing my pendulum picked up was two hidden bruises. One was buried in her shoulder region about one inch deep and the other a half inch deep in her left thigh. The shoulder bruise was affecting one of the sacropinalis muscles, and the leg bruise affected her adductor. First a bit of dowsing back and then I asked, what happened four years and two months ago? She answered instantly, I was thrown against the wall by my dear brother. Her mother joined in by exclaiming that it was four years two months ago to the day. I reset the muscles and doused a suitable oil balm to extract the bruises from her body. I suppose that being an American explained why she threw her arms around me, kissed me fervently and said I was the only man in the world who had told her what was wrong. After being told by so many specialists that the trouble was all in her mind, she must have felt so relieved she would have kissed Nelson's monument. There was a happy outcome as well for a young professional guitarist who was rushed off to hospital with a chest seizure. But in the emergency ward they could find nothing wrong with him. He came to me with the problem, and I was able to sort out the restriction in his chest. Yet I could still see there was something heavy looking about his manner, like the weight of the world. Dowsing back in time I surprised him by asking what happened one July day 19 years ago and he didn't seem to have a clue. Next evening, he rang me excitedly with the news. Yes it was 19 and a half years ago. In July just as you said. I was chucked out of the college band, and I was told I was useless, and furthermore would never make it. 
So now this successful guitarist felt elated. And he told me it was just like a black cloud lifting. Dowsing back in time helped this patient to recover his self-esteem. Sometimes a bonus can happen along without any need for dowsing back. By the time a lady patient first arrived on my doorstep, she had already left her 82nd birthday behind. I can tell you she needed a lot of sorting out. I drew up a list of priorities for dealing with, which went something like this, one back, two digestion, three intestinal problem, four lungs and five bad circulation. A formidable list, but on my side, she had determination and vitality. I was extremely careful with dowsing, double-checking and rechecking every single problem. Only gentle treatment could even be contemplated, so I relied a lot on herbal oils. The unforeseen part was that she took a liking to one of those oils, the one that the pendulum picked out for her digestion. It seemed to help her digestion so much, that instead of chips with everything, it became herbal oil with everything. I heard about the bonus when she arrived back from the audio specialist. She had gone there to change the hearing aid, because now it was too loud. For 30 years the only way she could hear, was to turn her hearing aid up full blast. She had forgotten what it was like to hear the tap dripping, or the birds chirping. She chuckled as she told me how the audio specialist was thrown into confusion. Impossible, he said. In all of his professional life he had never been asked to fit a lesser hearing aid to someone recovering her hearing. Moreover, in all his professional life, he confirmed, that he had never come across anybody making such a remarkable recovery. But more than that, he didn't want to know. He dismissed out of hand her explanation of how she recovered her hearing by using herbal oil so freely. He just pointed upwards, heavenwards and dismissed the subject. So many exciting things open up for any dowser who has a searching mind, that I feel sure new discoveries will be endless. Already two leading members of this society have introduced me to the idea of dowsing patients over the phone. I didn't know how it worked, but I read a bit about Edison in the book Pendulum Power. When Edison was asked what is electricity? He replied, I don't know, but seeing that it's there let's use it. My vision for the future will be of phones, with closed circuit television and the pendulum healer. Sitting in his comfortable room monitoring his patient on the screens. Meantime, I hope I have been able to draw attention to some of the hazards of living in the 20th century. Such a lot of troubles can be avoided by a little self-help with a pendulum. The End